No, let's say do let's try to see the previous example only. In the earlier example, we have seen that if number of students there is a group with n one students, n one boys, and their average is given as let's say 20, 20 marks, and there is a group of other you know girls, and their average is given as 10 marks. And if given n1 and n2 values, we are able to find out what is the net average of the final group and I mix these two groups, okay. Now let us say it is not given, n1 and n2 is not given. Now the average of this group is 20, average of this group is 10. Now when I mix them, let us assume that I want an average of 15, 17 marks. Then what is the uh, number of, you know, what should be n1 from here and what should be n2 from here or what is the ratio in which I should take the boys and girls into this class so that I get 17 marks as the average. If that is the question, in order to solve it, let's try to find out that ratio. Okay, so what is it? Given two averages and the group average you are supposed to find out what is the ratio in which i should mix the items in so that i'll get that group average got it okay let's try to see this in the earlier question what we have seen is in the earlier uh, formula if you assume that a is the group average a equal to n1 into a1 plus n2 into a2 so this is the total contribution from the first group and this is the total contribution from the second group. In the previous example, it was the total marks, isn't it? Divided by N1 plus N2, okay? Now, I'll just cross multiply A into N1 plus A into N2 equal to N1 A1 plus N2 A2. Now, let me try to get this one, this one, this side and let me try to push this one to the other side, okay. Then what I get is, if I pull out N2 as common, then I get A minus A2, right, equal to N1 into if I push this from this side, it is going to be A1 minus A. And also just for the sake of, you know, uh, just to follow the convention, always assume that out of these two groups, whenever we talk about the problems, A1 is having the higher average compared to A2. Okay, that is why the way I have, you know, shifted the terms is also in such a way that I have written A1 minus A. So that it is a positive number and A minus A. A2, it is a positive number. So, what I mean to say is, if you assume that A2 is here in the number line, A1 will be here, which means A1 is greater than A2 and A is going to be here, right? Now, if you observe this, I have written A1 minus A, which is positive value and A minus A2, which is positive value. Just to maintain those conventions, I am writing it like this, okay? Huh. Now, N1 by N2, N1 by N2, which means I no, equal to a minus a2 divided by a1 minus a so this is the ratio now what i mean to say by this is if you are having for example if they are saying that there is a group of boys whose average marks is 20 and there is a group of girls whose average marks is 10 now if i want to mix them in such a way that i get a group of students whose average marks is 17 what should be the ratio of boys is to ratio of girls if that is the question asked then you can directly say ratio of boys is to ratio of girls is equal to a minus a2 so what is in this case what is a finally you are going to get 17 right so 17 minus 10 a2 means the lower one right 17 minus 10 is 7 divided by a1 minus a so what is a1 minus a 20 minus 17 which is 3 therefore if you mix them in a ratio of 7 is to 3 we are going to get this average as 17 so when i say if you mix them in a ratio of 7 is to 3 it can be any number either you take 7 boys and 3 girls it is going to satisfy this or you take 70 boys and 3 girls it is going to satisfy 30 it is going to satisfy right or you can take let's say 21 and 9 it is going to satisfy as long as this number is in the ratio your final answer is going to be in the you know be be the value that you want therefore they will normally be not interested in the exact number they will just be asking you the ratio once you find out the ratio then taking them in that ratio is 
fine isn't it okay now yeah this this is the formula that we are getting one other simple way of solving the questions is since many of the questions are going to be asked on this model one other simple way which uh, many textbooks will you know describe is if you write them like this so if you say a1 and then let's say a and then a2 which means if you have averages you just write them like this a1 is the group average with the higher number a2 is the group average with the lower number and a is the final average that you wanted to get right now they say that a1 minus a you just write it here and then a minus a2 okay n1 and n2 now easier way to remember this uh, this number is this formula is n1 is to n2 equal to see this n1 is to n2 equal to a minus a2 a minus a2 is to a1 minus a getting this yeah if you want to do the questions faster you just remember this diagram so that you can directly get the answer but you know if you don't want to remember it then anyway you can derive it that is why i have even shown you the der derivation so if you want to see how it works on this example you can just see this see now what is the higher average higher average is 20 right what is the lower average lower average is 10 and what is the average you wanted to attain it is 17 right now if you want to see so this is the boys and this is the girls right therefore let us say this is the nb number of boys is to number of girls okay now you just take this difference it is 3 you just take this difference it is 7 therefore number of boys is to number of girls equal to 7 is to 3 got it so by by remembering this diagram you will be able to solve some questions faster so with examples you will be able to practice it and and in general the convention is many people follow this higher average here lower average here and the average you wanted to attain the group average the final average is going to be here and then n1 and n2 you are going to write it here even if you write them in the other way then also it is fine but that is the convention many of the books are following already okay fine Hi. if you are planning to do masters then doing masters abroad is better than doing masters in india i'll give you all the reasons so first reason is out of one lakh students who take gate every year there are only 500 seats in old IITs. So all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And IITs, universities better than IITs, they have very good acceptance rate like 30%, 40%. But all the IITs put together have an acceptance rate of 0.5%. And if you are working hard to get into IIT Bombay, IIT Bombay's ranking is 177. And IIT Roorkee's ranking is 400. If you are happy to get into IIT Roorkee, then getting into universities better than IIT Roorkee is easier compared to getting into IIT Roorkee. And looking at the salaries for computer science, of, uh, for software jobs, if you have done your masters in computer science in US, the salaries are ranging from 80 lakhs per year to 1.2 crore per year. So even if you take an average of 1 crore per year, your savings will be much higher than the salaries in India. After taxes and your cost of living, you can easily save 40 to 50 lakhs uh, per year. And in India, the maximum jobs that you get is around 30 lakhs. So your savings will be much greater than the salaries in India. And these are all the services that we provide. University shortlisting. So depending on your profile, we will shortlist what are the universities that you have to apply. And statement of purpose building and then LOR guidance and GRE and English test assistance and education loan assistance. So you don't have to have any collateral, which, which means without any security, now you can get education loan. Getting education loan is very simple these days. And whatever the amount fee, the amount of uh, fee that you have, you have a range of uh, universities. You can apply for 10 lakh universities, 20 lakh universities or 50 lakh universities. But whatever it is, you are going to get complete education loan and you can pay off your education loan in one year after you, getting it, after you get a job. And then we do visa assistance, mock visa interviews and then connecting with the university alumni. So now you might ask why we should join Game of Visas. So the answer is we have 90% success rate, 99% success rate. And these are all the destinations that we guide the students to. So we guide students to any country that you want to go. 
So now it is not just USA. We guide to UK, Germany, Australia, Canada. So we guide we guide students to all the countries. We work with all the destinations. And if you are interested in going abroad, you have to just drop us a message on this WhatsApp number nine four nine four triple five four five four. Okay, thank you.